lead the, the medical solutions uh, business unit from a marketing perspective. And uh, we've got a very busy uh, agenda today, so I want to just jump right in. Uh, I'm going to quickly give you an introduction to who Stratasys is, talk about why 3D printing in medicine is being adopted so quickly and, and what, it's, uh, what it's going after in the healthcare market in terms of uh, improvements. Uh, then we'll talk about all the use cases for, uh, that we, we have targeting the hospital and medical research community in improving delivery of healthcare. Finally, we'll have a brief overview of Stratasys portfolio and discussion. So Stratasys is the 3D printing solutions company. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with what 3D printing is, very simply put, it is the, <clears throat> um, it is the it is the act of taking a digital file that's embedded in a computer and converting it into a physical object using a 3D printer, laying down the material one layer at a time. Uh, and so essentially using that, you can convert digital files that come, are represented as patient anatomy, or you can uh, generate parts uh, for medical devices, or you can generate test fixtures, any, any geometry you can imagine, you can then match it to the material that's most appropriate and uh, convert that digital file into a physical object. And you can see here some examples of what that looks like. So Stratasys has been around for more than 25 years. Uh, we are the leader in terms of installed printer base around the world. And we have a, with, a, with over 140,000 cumulative uh, installed printers. <clears throat> and then we have also a, a leadership position in terms of uh, technology and innovation with over 800 pending or, or, or granted patents on additive manufacturing and a number of technology leadership awards. So why is 3D printing in medical uh, a hot topic and clearly a growing application for 3D printing? We really see it as keeping pace with today's challenges to, that, are, that are uniquely focused on the healthcare space. And when we talk about the challenges, we really see three that, that in particular are affecting hospitals and the delivery of patient care. First, there's the rising cost of healthcare costs. In the vast majority of, of, uh, of nations, the cost of healthcare is growing at a faster rate than inflation. <clears throat> what that means is that Healthcare spend is taking up a larger share of the national pocketbook. We also see an aging population in the United States and in developed countries around the world where the population of patients that are over 65 who happen to account for a, a disproportionately large amount of interventional activities in hospitals and, uh, and other medical resources, that's going to double from 8% in 2010 to 15% in 2040. And in the U.S. alone, we see a physician shortage of 90,000 physicians. <clears throat> Finally, we see payers that are increasingly focused on value-based reimbursement and removing waste from the healthcare system. Uh, certain elements of the Affordable Care Act in particular are going to be penalizing hospitals that are less efficient or less effective at delivering care or delivering lower patient satisfaction. So there's an emphasis on improving um, efficiency, improving quality of care, but doing it in a way that is economically viable. So when we look at 3D printing, we really look at our solutions as impacting both the clinical outcomes and the resulting economics to the healthcare ecosystem. And so we have solutions that really span the breadth of, of a hospital uh, service care uh, services. So first of, first of all, there's, there's going to be patient care uh, through pre-surgical planning models. 3D printing is also able to improve clinical training and education by creating realistic simulation and training models. There's a huge opportunity to create custom tools for research and operating room efficiency. And then finally, uh, 3D printing can be an innovation center within the hospital to power the, uh, the activity, the research, and the development of new ideas that go on in a hospital 
on a daily basis. So I now want to walk through each of those use cases in, in greater depth and talk about how 3D printing in that application is improving the delivery of healthcare. So patient care is probably the primary or foremost use of, uh, of 3D printing. And that is, <coughs> um, the way this is generally used is to start with a patient-specific image from a CT or an MRI, a scan of a patient's anatomy. The hospital will then take that anatomy, do what's called segmentation in terms of identifying the, the anatomy of interest and, and pulling it out of the overall data set. And then you would convert that file into a 3D printable file, select your material, print it, and use it to, uh, to guide your, your care delivery. We see in the hospital these models being used in three different ways uh, to improve patient outcomes with personalized, uh, personalized models. The first is to they enable the physician to plan procedures. So using a model, interacting with it in the physical space, they're able to optimize their therapeutic approach in a way that is unmatched when looking at a computer screen and projecting what the anatomy might look like when it <coughs> isn't physically in your hands. Having the model also allows the physician to practice the procedure, so to actually rehearse the steps that they're going to take. Um, and perhaps that rehearsal will be done in conjunction with other members of the care team. And it can be a multiple di multidisciplinary uh, approach and communication tool. This can result in shorter procedure times, fewer complications, and a faster recovery for the patient. Like in any kind of profession, being able to practice on the specific problem you're about to face uh, is only going to improve the results. Finally, these models can be used to determine whether an, a, a course of action is appropriate or not. So for example, if you're considering implanting a valve, a heart valve into a patient, but you're not sure if this valve is the appropriate fit or the approach you're going to take is, a, is going to be safe um, or be able to deliver the device through that path, you can print the model and perform the procedure on that model and then determine uh, perhaps maybe this isn't the right approach or maybe there's a better approach. And so the ability to rule in or rule out a certain therapeutic course for a patient before getting into the operating room has uh, obviously significant implications to the health of both the, the health of the patient and of course the use of uh, resources in the operating room. 3D printing has the opportunity to really benefit all of the stakeholders within, the, within a surgical uh, experience. So first of all, there's the patients uh, where, who are going to benefit from better surgery and recovery. They will also have better informed consent. And I think this is an undervalued and underappreciated aspect of having a 3D model to communicate with the patient, to help them really understand what the physician is planning to do and have that patient confidently say yes I want you to perform that procedure. It leads, it, it leads to higher satisfaction, has been shown in some studies. Finally, uh, secondly, you've got the providers, hospitals and physicians, who are able to more efficiently, efficiently use scarce resources like the operating room or avoid waste by not using the incorrect device. Um, they're able to communicate and, and get complex surgeries aligned ahead of time. And then, of course, there are the payers who, in the long run, are going to benefit from lower costs, from reduced waste, fewer complications, all the things that are driving the increased cost of healthcare. Uh, payers will benefit from as well. So, I want to share a um, uh, a case um, so that you can hear really from the physician's perspective on how this works. So I'm going to play a video from one of our customers, Nicholas Children's Hospital, part of the Miami Children's Health System, uh, and their use of 3D printing for pediatric cardiology. Because it mimics asthma so much, I 
Yeah, yeah, luck out. I'm sorry, we're having some technical difficulties here. So clearly, uh, 3D printing can have a very significant impact on the lives of patients um, as well as caregivers and the physicians who treat them. Um, and it's really about re uh, realizing the true potential of personalized therapy uh, to be able to take a patient's actual anatomy, print it out, plan, practice, and determine what the uh, appropriate course of action is using that patient's actual anatomy. The second application uh, to focus on is clinical training and education. And the first thing to note is that there are a lot of challenges with the current medical tra training and education models. Uh, they have some limitations. So if you train on animal models, they're only going to approximate human anatomy. They're not going inclu to include the target pathology of interest. Um, cadavers are highly processed in terms of uh, after they've been chemically treated, they no longer retain the real field tissue, uh, and they may not include the pathology either. Finally, mannequins are only an average or approximation of human anatomy, um, and they don't include a significant range of clinical scenarios. The opportunity with 3D, printer, uh, 3D printed models is to create customized and enhanced uh, with improved realism uh, for your models. So you can create models using real human scans. So you take the patient, uh, of patients that have the disease that you're interested in treating, and you actually take those scans to create your model. They, ha they allow you to expand the range of clinical scenarios. So you can have a digital um, set of files for patients with different types of aneurysms or different types of heart defects. And then you can print each of those as they're needed to give exposure to your physicians on the full range of clinical scenarios they would expect to face uh, in the operating room. You can enhance the realism of the model. You can include real tissue properties 
like soft tissue and hard bone in a single material in a single print. <clears throat> you can in include actual uh, simulate blood flow in the model. You can uh, implement color realism and differentiation uh, to enhance the models as well. And then finally, these models are easy to maintain. Unlike animals and cadavers where you have to deal with hazardous waste disposal or you have to have lab technicians on site when you're performing training or you need to um, uh, you know, maintain, the, maintain the, the model in certain environments. Uh, you can train on 3D printed models anywhere, store them digitally, and only print them as needed. So I want to share a, a, a demonstration uh, that really shows how truly powerful these models can be. It's from one of our customers, the Center for Biomedical Technology and Integration. And this is a neurosurgery training phantom that they developed. You can see here the model has two elements to it. There's a head model that is reusable, and then an insert model that's at the, at the top of the skull. The, you can see the physician here is creating an incision and peeling back the, what, what the quote unquote skin flap in order to access the bone. They're using the actual bone trephining saw that they would use in a procedure. So the physicians are getting experience using the actual devices that they would use in a surgery. That blue tube you see going into the skull is there uh, to allow uh, fluid flow throughout the model as well. So when you pass into the model, you can see here there's, there's air bubbles and there's little uh, bits of detritus floating. So there's actually a fluid-filled environment. They've colored the model to uh, highlight arteries and veins and other critical structures that the physicians need to train on and be aware of as they're performing the procedure. And the, the real advantage, uh, one of the real advantages I see to these models is that you can plan into them uh, to have complications. So either you can print challenging anatomy that the physician will have to face clinically and, and learn how to deal with and give them that challenge in a model or you can include other challenges. So for example, when they go to take the biopsy of the tumor in this model, there's actually a fluid-filled sac behind uh, where the biopsy is taken, and it releases a blood hemorrhage and simulates a blood hemorrhage. And the physician needs to respond and treat the blood hemorrhage just the way they would treat a hemorrhage in a live patient. So you can simulate these complications on the model uh, in the training environment uh, before they would have to deal with them live. These 3D models, uh, using 3D models, has actually been studied pretty widely. We reviewed all the medical and scientific literature relating to 3D models, and we found evidence that it leads to better learning outcomes, that students perform better on tests when they've been training on 3D models. There's cost savings compared to other models, such as uh, plastinated models. Uh, it, it's going to improve education, and of course the models, because they are replicating the scans from MRIs and CTs, are highly accurate, down to, uh, down to sub-millimeter accuracy. We've compiled all of these findings and research, uh, and I've, the link is here, and I'm sure uh, the folks, good folks at Javelin can share this link with you afterwards. Uh, we, we've compiled it all into a white paper uh, that you can download and read and, and basically learn all the best practices uh, and um, the evidence to date on the use of 3D models for education and training. And the objective, of course, is that through better training, you're going to have better physician preparation, which, of course, will lead to better outcomes for patients. But there's also an economical argument in terms of uh, efficiencies in training. The cost of running animal labs and cadaver labs is extremely high because of all the complications, logistics, hazardous waste, uh, disposal, et cetera. With 3D printing models, you don't have those costs, and so the costs are significantly lower. Third application is around lab and operating room efficiency. And the, the, the genius behind 3D printing is it allows you to realize all of the 3D uh, geometry that you, would, that you can envision. Uh, so if you have a certain lab test setup that you wanted to achieve, if you wanted to have certain fixtures within uh, your operating room or to have a custom tray built for your operating room, if you can envision it, you can print it. 
And having this capability on site is a lot cheaper and faster than if you outsource the manufacturing to, a, uh, to, a, to an outside provider. Um, so 90% faster and, and 30 to 50% of the cost related to, um, compared to outsourcing. And these, ma these materials are also made to be biocompatible and sterilizable. So you can bring them into uh, patient contact if needed uh, and bring them into a sterile operating environment if that's a requirement. So here's an example from the Derisi lab at the University of San Francisco. Uh, prior to having a 3D printer on site, they would outsource these custom centrifuges to an outside provider, and the vendor was charging them roughly $350 per model. Um, they didn't buy the, the 3D printer to create these models, uh, but once they had it on site, somebody had the insight that maybe we can print these on our own and manufacture them on our own to avoid that cost. They, they, they did the research, they uh, developed the model internally, and lo and behold, uh, these models are now being produced at $25 per model, which is 10% of the cost. Um, and it, 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 so it's clearly a significant savings. And they're able to build them overnight rather than having to order them and wait several days for them to be manufactured and shipped to them. So cheaper and faster. So custom tools uh, really can, are there to optimize your workflow. The last application is around hospital innovation. And there's a couple of different aspects to that. The first is uh, to be able to do rapid prototyping. So if a physician in the hospital has an idea of, of how to improve a current medical device or perhaps to create an entirely new medical device, you can take that idea from concept, mock it up in a, a computer computer-aided uh, design program, and then print it out and begin testing it using functional parts. Uh, and so the value of having a 3D model is that it can really enhance communication, enhance feedback to take that idea to the next step um, so that once you, you've developed it further, you can perhaps share the, the intellectual property with a, a, a partner, a medical device company, or collaborator. Um, to push the project further and get more value out of it for the hospital. You can also use these model, use the 3D printer to create realistic anatomical models to then test devices. And so um, there are hospitals that are collaborating with medical device companies by creating these realistic anatomical models for medical device companies to come in and test their devices on them. So for example, this is from the Jacobs Institute. It's a vascular testing model. And they took patient scans of patients who had aneurysms <clears throat> or patients with complex uh, neurovascular networks. And they print them out. And then medical device companies come to them and test their devices on that platform. Um, it's going to replicate the, the patient environment uh, exactly rather than using an animal or cadaver model. Here's an example of what that looks like. So on the left panel, they are, uh, they've simulated a clot within the model. You can see on the left branch it's clear when they uh, performed angiography uh, and the right branch is occluded. They then sent the medical device, which is a, a micro uh, stent, stent retriever uh, for clot removal, into the device. <clears throat> and at the end of the procedure, they perform confirmation angiography. And you can see here that the right branch is unblocked and uh, the vascular network is flowing. However, if you look at the arrow, you can see that part of the distal branch is occluded. So while the device worked in some ways, it was suboptimal. And that's valuable feedback for a designer or developer to have before taking it, uh, the model, taking the device into expensive animal testing um, or certainly before it's used on humans. So the, the value is gathering that information in a lower risk environment that's also quite clinically accurate and clinically relevant. So having this technology within a hospital will really help you keep pace with today's challenges and, in that, and allow you to harness the genius and innovation of your physician. Hospital-based 3D printing programs have really uh, uh, exploded, I would say. Um, 
over the past several years. And you can see here the number of uh, the, the types of institutions from Boston Children's to the Cleveland Clinic to the Mayo Clinic, Miami Children's, all these organizations, top leading research hospitals have already adopted 3D printing programs. And we're starting to see it um, uh, down <coughs> being adopted by, by regional centers and uh, tertiary centers as well. We, Stratasys provides end-to-end -end solutions for 3D printing. We have a range of printers from smaller desktop models to larger production uh, level systems. We also have a range of materials that allow you to uh, meet any application, whether you need rigid materials to replicate bone or flexible materials for soft tissue, or you need sterilizable biocompatible materials, or perhaps uh, heat resistance or higher strength um, if you're working uh, on a prosthetics or orthotics program within your hospital. We have different materials to meet your different needs uh, with literally thousands of combinations. So at that point, I will uh, hand the call back over to John and uh, take questions. Thanks, Michael. That was a fantastic presentation. Um, those of you on the call, there is a little question bar. If you've got any uh, questions, you can go ahead and type them into there. We'll, we'll hang on the line uh, for a few minutes and see if there are any out there. Um, just while we're waiting to see if there are. Um, if you'd like to take some next steps or find some more information, um, please contact us here at Javelin. I know that Michael's helped people out one-on-one -on -one, uh, in the past, and I'm sure he'd be happy to take a phone call from you on specific applications or questions to see if the technology is relevant to some of the things that you do. Um, so it could be a conversation with one of our folks here at, uh, at Javelin, or it could be some of the white papers or videos that Michael had mentioned or it could also be, you know, a, a phone call if, uh, if it makes sense. Michael, I think... Absolutely. Always happy, always happy to answer questions uh, if there's, um, you know, kind of institution-specific issues or questions. We're happy to engage on those as well. Great. Michael, that must have been the world's best presentation because I've, I've done hundreds of these webinars and uh, there's always questions at the end. So you, you covered everything and I know you flew through some of that material. But uh, on behalf of Javelin, I just want to thanks very much, say thanks very much. I appreciate you taking the time to share uh, your knowledge. Uh, absolutely. I appreciate the opportunity. Thank thanks you. For, thanks very much, everyone. We're going to end the webinar there. Thanks for, thanks for your time.